All right, my rock stars, this is section 3.4, lines and linear functions. Uh, let's say you wanted to graph y equals negative 2x plus 30. Here's one way you could do it. You could just take a, make a, a, a data table of values, plug in negative 3, get out 36, because negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6 plus 30. So you plot the point negative 3, 36, right here. Similarly, you would plot 0, comma 30 here. And scrolling things up a little bit, you would plot 10, 10, 10 here, and connect the dots with a long straight line. Boom, you're done. Other people might also think about uh, looking at this negative 2 and this 30 and remembering you can plot, you can always plot a point here. The easiest plot point to plot is with 0 because it's just 0, comma 30 right there. And then remembering something about slope, you can go, uh, you can fall and crawl. <laughs> you can fall, for example, two blocks and crawl one here. Fall two, crawl one. And in any case, you get a straight line. Here's another way to do it. If you have a function that looks like this, 2x plus 3y equals 18, all the variables on one side, I mean, you could move the 2x over, divide all the terms on both sides by 3 to get y equals something. But maybe this would be a little easier. You take 0, plug it in for x, and figure out what y is going to be. 2 times 0 plus 3y equals 18. That turns into y equals 6. 6, so plot the point 0, 6 here. Then take 0 and plug it in for y. 2x plus 3 times 0 is equal to 18. So therefore, 2x is equal to 18. And therefore, x is equal to 9. And you get this point here. And in any case, there are the points. And you connect the dots and you get a straight line. These are called intercepts. Uh, the top one here is called the y-intercept because it intercepts the y-axis even though the y itself is not 0, y is equal to 6. x-intercept is down here when uh, you have the point 9 comma 0. Something we need to remember is slope. It's Here's how it's defined. The formula is right here. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So you've got here, and the way you get it is, you can see you've got this length and this length, and you divide the two. This is actually called the rise, and then one formula is rise over run, with a change in y and the change in x here. Change in y, change in x. So linear functions can look like this, where you've got the slope and the y-intercept right here, the y-intercept and the slope. Um, if the slope is zero, then it kind of degenerates. If this is zero times x plus b, then then it just turns into y equals b right here. Y equals negative two. This horizontal line is here. It has its formula y equals negative two. That's the opposite of, of what you might expect. You might expect y equals negative two to be vertical because the y-axis is vertical, but it's not. It's the line that is two units down along the y-axis. And here, a vertical line, x equals 4. Uh, the slope here is so steep, so high, that you can't even quantify it. It's not a function. It fails the vertical line test. Um, and the slope is not calculatable. You can't find a slope. It's, when you ask the question, what is the slope, there is no, uh, no real answer. It's undefined. So you can say x equals 4 because it's the line that occurs 4 units over along the x-axis. In this example, we have to graph the function f of x is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 1 and determine the slope. Well, I'm going to cut to the chase right now. The slope is going to be negative 2 thirds. You can see that in the function. Just read it right there. But if you wanted to actually calculate it and look and, and find it, this is what it would look like. Besides, if you wanted to graph it, you would need a couple of things. You could, for example, graph the y-intercept and then fall 2, 1, 2, and crawl 3, 1, 2, 3. Fall 2, 
and crawl three, put a dot. Fall two, crawl three. I'm saying fall and crawl because of the negative slope right here. Uh, if you needed a table of values, you could also plug in zero because we know that uh, zero will cancel out. You get zero comma one and you plot the point here. Plug in three, these would cancel and you get negative two over one plus one, which is negative one and plot that right here. Six, six comma negative three is right here. Six comma negative three and then nine comma negative five is right here. Uh, a lot of Algebra 2 students, I find, don't use the table, and that's fine. However, when you have something more complicated, like a quadratic or cubic function that you need to graph, uh, a table of values comes really handy. So make sure you, you use it in your arsenal of tricks when it comes to graphing. When you think, when I ask for a graph, I write equation, table, and then graph here. Unless you have a, a, a shorter cut, like y intercept and rise over run. So here's how you calculate slope. Uh, a strategy to make sure you don't mix up the x's and y's. You can label them here. It doesn't take very much time and it's a, only a little bit of handwriting. But this, if this is going to be x1, just mark x1 here, y1, x2, y2. So when you get to the formula, you can plug them in correctly. y2 is negative 5, it goes here y1 is negative 1, it goes right here. And the tricky part is the subtraction. Negative 5 minus negative 1 is actually negative 4. x2 minus x1, x2 minus x1 here, 9 minus 3, you get 6. That's negative 2 thirds. Here's another formula that you might have had in Algebra 1. Uh, if you want the equation of a line, if m equals 3 and the point is negative 3 comma 2, and you can use the point slope form, which is right here. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. And you fill in the information. Again, I enjoy labeling this X1, Y1. This is negative 3, and Y1 is right here, too. And you can simplify that a little bit. You get here. Parallel lines. If you see these lines here, they are parallel. They're like railroad railroad tracks. If you keep on going, they'll never intersect. Never intersect. Wait, there's an intersection. It is not parallel. One thing you find about these slopes is that they're equal. This is a slope of 2, slope of 2. <clears throat> slope of 2, slope of 2. And you see they have different y-intercepts. These, these 4 and this negative 3 have nothing to do with each other except the fact that they're not the same number. So you can say that the slopes are equal here, therefore you know this is parallel. Uh, here the slopes are both undefined, so then they're also parallel. But here, check this out, 3 is not equal to 1 half, so therefore the lines are not parallel. Even though the intercepts, negative 2 and negative 2, are equal. So slopes are equal if you're going to have parallel lines. Perpendicular lines are a little bit more tricky. Here's the symbol for perpendicular. You can use that if you want, uh, as opposed to just writing out the word perpendicular. It's a long line. It's a long word. So you have to make sure that the slopes are both opposites and reciprocals. There's two requirements. The slope has got to be opposite. You have to have both a positive and negative represented in the two slopes. And then they've got to be flipped versions of each other, reciprocals. So check this out. It's like this. 3 over 4 is, is, the reciprocal is 4 over 3, and you've got one positive and one negative. Fine. These are perpendicular slopes. These are perpendicular slopes because they, you've got a negative and a positive, negative and a positive, and then they are reciprocals of each other. They're flipped. Again, here, this is, the, this slope, these two slopes are going to be perpendicular because you can take negative 4 and you can always put it over 1 and then all of a sudden you see that they are reciprocals great and you've got a negative and a positive these are not perpendicular although they are reciprocals they're not perpendicular because one they're both positive you, it's lacking a negative slope where's the negative slope 
it's not perpendicular. Here, you've got one positive and one negative, and that's great, but they're not reciprocals of each other. 